Hi, hi. Um, my better half's uh, little scooter, which is a little Yamaha scooter, full stroke, it's got some issues and it can't idle for very long or it seems to need to warm up for ages before it actually can uh, maintain any kind of revs. So I've took the carburetor off and removed the float chamber and uh, I thought I'd just go through what I've done and hopefully it'll be okay now. So basically what we have is we have this thing here called the float chamber which goes underneath the carburetor so it's mounted like so and this little reservoir here fills up with fuel and then the floats, once the fuel levels up, these floats will then float on the fuel and then close off the, um, the inlet for the fuel. So that way it stops these from overfilling because the, the fuel tank is above the carburetor. So effectively what could happen is you could constantly try and fill it up all the time. But with a float chamber, it stops that from happening. And uh, so that works, oh, that's not a, quite an old system, but it does work quite well. That's the fuel intake, and one way to test this is quite disgusting, but if you blow on that pipe, I don't think you can hear that. But if I mimic the floats actually floating, <laughs> it's a special instrument, isn't it? You know, it's like some trumpet thing. So, um, yeah, so I took the float chamber off, I've blown it all out, but I've also I took the jets out. But what I'll do is I'll just, go, I'll just take them out again, just so you can see for yourself. Uh, basically, there's two jets here. I believe that one's the idle jet. So that's sort of the one that maintains the, um, uh, the revs, uh, low rev. And this one has your main, main jet, I believe. I haven't checked it out to confirm that, but you, you will need to do that. But that's what I believe they are. This one here is blocked, or was blocked, and I've cleaned it out. So basically, what, all you do is you grab a screwdriver, Make sure it's well that it fits the hole, it fits the slot properly, and you undo that, and remove it. There's, there's a couple of little things you can use to help uh, to um, aid you in seeing whether or not put that down for a second, to see whether or not it's blocked or not. One thing is a bright light, so you shine the light through it, and if you see the, you know, you can tell sort of. Oh, there's a camera. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> or this, this, you can probably remember these in school. This is a 10 times magnifying glass. Really useful things to have. And you, you know, you can literally just you inspect the uh, actual um, jet and see if it's blocked. It's not blocked now, it was blocked and congealed, um, but I've cleaned it now with the airline. You could use anything really, just poke the rubbish out the holes, but make sure you've got any debris you get rid of it, obviously just go back into the holes again or, or go somewhere else in the car where you, where you don't want it. So just to see if I can try something here, so you can see for yourself. So I'll put that there. Is, that, is this possible? Alright, is this, oh, might be. There you go, see there's little holes on the side there. I never. I've got my accessory lens. And then there's a hole at the end. There's a hole. I don't know if it's very clear or not. Probably not. There's a hole in the end, and then you get a hole this end as well. That's where it draws fuel from this end. So, um, effectively, if they've, if they've got any kind of debris in them, um, they're, or they're blocked at all, or you've got resin build up from your fuel, um, yeah, you, you, they're not gonna, it's not going to do its job. So, I've cleaned that one, so it's going to reinsert that back into the owl. Gently with my bad eyesight. Ah, sorry. Gently. <laughs> and then you just screw that down. There, there's no adjustment on these, these are fixed jets. So you just literally just got to make sure you lift down tight. I'm using my left hand for some reason, that's why I can't aim. So you screw it all the way down to the bottom. Oh, should I change hands? I'm not very good with my left hand, am I? There you go, so screw, you screw that down so it's. Don't go over tighten it, remember it's brass and alley in your record, just, just hand tight. And then you've got another jet here as well, there's one here, which is just a simple jet, it's basically just like a hole in the middle of the jet. Um, this brass thing is purely an outer, it puts the jet in the, in the right distance from the actual carburetor, depending on what arm um, bike you've got, depending on what jets they have. 
and yet again you've got the same arrangement here you effectively got like a little brass with a hole in the middle and you've got to make sure that's clear um, sometimes you want to poke it out with something um, I don't know uh, a braid or a toothbrush or something I don't know something to poke any rubbish out um, but then you put it on pop it back in there like so tighten it up just hand tight don't over tighten that was your breaker um, if your jet's badly worn you, you'll need new jets yeah I know some kids that they change their jets to try and get a bit more oomph out of their bikes, but um, I don't see the point to be honest. It's 50cc for God's sake. <laughs> um, so that's that. And once you've got, got that far, and you've cleaned that out, you know that your float chain is working because you did a little test blowing on here. And uh, then you reinsert the actual um, float chamber itself. Back onto it. So, and then there's, in this case, there's four screws. So three screws that hold it into place against the gasket. And you ideally know, need to insert those screws fairly even, even pressure. So don't tighten one right up, then the other one right up. Do one at a time, um, the final tightening. Otherwise, you, yet again, you can cause problems. So just hand tight, not even hand tight, just, just screw them all down. Not too tight, just, just, just a little bit. That, just till it's down and do the same with that one. So effectively just holding it in place. And that one here. I'm not an engineer, I just like to fiddle. So I'm sure there's some people out there who are qualified mechanics who can tell me where I'm going wrong and I'd appreciate that actually. That'd be, uh, that would be good actually if somebody could point out any mistakes that I'm making. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I've done. So I, I removed the carburetor from the bike, which was very easy on these, it's so simple to remove. Um, and then just took out the three screws, made sure that the, uh, this is the fuel, into, this is the fuel, um, is it fuel drain? What's that, that must be a drain. Yeah, it's drain. Yeah, that's, this one's there's a fuel drain, this one, sorry. You've got a screw here, which allows you to... Is that a fuel drain? That can't be a fuel drain. Ah, that is fuel drain. I don't know, no, it's when I put the bag, there's like a little brass tube mounted onto this. And what that's for is if, let's say for instance, that float chamber ever goes, the, the, or it leaks a little bit, the actual um, valve for, for the shutoff for the fuel, the fuel gets to the top of that pipe and then effectively run out of this, yeah? You've also got this little screw on the side here as well, and that's to um, remove any dirty fuel that might be sitting in the bottom of the float chamber. It's a good idea every so often just to undo that, um, if you can while it's in situ, and, uh, and that'll drain off from here, that'll just drain off any sludge or water, for instance, that you might have in your carburetor. Um, so how do you water get in, in there? Well, it's called condensation. You get condensation in your pep tank, um, especially over the winter. Um, especially, and also if you're not using the bike very much, because um, yeah, it has moisture in it. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope you found that of uh, interest and of use. If you must come on and subscribe, uh, if you really appreciate it, thank you. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd just have a little, you yeah, know, a little video, little video. So thank you for watching. Thumbs up. <laughs>